Welcome to episode three of Bonus Action, a Duels and Man Dorks podcast. I am Connor. And I'm Sam. We are the Dungeon Bros, but we are not brothers. Nor are we in a dungeon. And today, we are with our friend Ivy. Hello, Ivy. Welcome. <gasps> Hello. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, that's awesome. This is definitely not a dungeon. <laughs> definitely not a dungeon. Oh, you didn't, no, you didn't... Oh, we thought you were going to be in a dungeon this whole time. Oh, I'm so sorry. Let me just move locations real quick. Hold on. <laughs> It just it kind of ruins the whole vibe that we're going for. It's okay. Um, sure, sure, okay. Sure. We've, we've been ruining our own vibe for years at this point. Yes. So, so. it's mm-hmm. part of the course around here. But uh, Ivy over here, we've we've met online a little bit, but we first yeah. heard about you when our friend, uh, the bearded GM at Last Gen Con, went to the Critter Awards. And we were yes. like, what's that? We've never heard of it. And we can't get tickets last second. No. So we weren't able to go. But learning more about you, uh, the Crit Awards, the Creator Recognition and Tabletop RPG Awards, uh, you're the CEO and founder of that. So what, what, kind of, what kind of inspired you to get this ball rolling on this whole project? Well, if you'll flash back to me a year ago in January of 2023 when a certain... Um, thing was happening very heavily in the TTRPG space as in a lot of um, D&D 5e things were changing um, and there was a lot of um, hurt and a lot of confusion going on and a th- lot of people that were trying to branch out into different TTRPGs or making their own and it came up in the conversation with uh, my friend uh, Dice Cream Sandwich we were out at lunch and I made a comment of um, I really wish there was something that recognized the people in the space who do so much because I was watching a lot of discourse and uh, a lot of, of things falling apart. And I was like, I really mm. wish there was something that could uh, recognize the people that are doing all of the things in the background or doing all of the things that are kind of holding the, this community together at the moment. And we sat there in silence and I said, oh... I could do that. I know plenty of people. I also have marketing and event management experience. I guess I can do that, huh? Um, cool. And then I hyper-focused for two weeks um, and got everything done. The first like round of forms were done in that time, like built and created. My first like sponsors and people that I was looking to work with was done. Um, I was like, oh, I don't know if it'll be done like for this year. And then I did it in seven months. Uh, so that was that was kind of how that came together it was just me realizing oh i could do that i know plenty of amazing people in this space and i did yeah that was really the story of of last year oh, all yeah. of last year we we on the podcast talked about it a lot um and yeah to be able to find something good actually mm-hmm. in that time for the community was very difficult yeah, yeah very important it's it's man it the community is so good, and they deserve so much better than how they've been treated. They deserve more people like you, I I personally think. Um, so you've already got one year of the Crit Awards under your belt, yes. and I assume you've learned a whole lot about how to make that process a whole lot better and how to refine things. So going forward for this year, uh, what is kind of your process for choosing who is nominated or figuring out what categories uh, you're going yeah. to include for your show? Yeah, so I love that you asked because our categories are getting finished up currently. We are, um, so we had 44 last year. I don't know if you all looked at the listing. We had 44, um, and that's everything from game masters to overlay makers to dice makers to mini painters, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we first, after the Curl Awards last year, did feedback of what other things can we include? What would you guys like to see more of? And I, overwhelming response which is very lovely of the community that this is such a community driven event to have that feedback uh and they want more art categories and more Mm -hmm. things like that so we've added more art categories for this upcoming year which i'm very excited about um we added a terrain and set building category um for those warhammer 40k lovers that kind (laughs) of want to be included or recognized for those things that they're doing um, the way that we go about that is we looked at what performed really well last year, what got a lot of nominations, and then what didn't. What can we rotate in since the categories, uh, we've already said in the beginning that they rotate. Um, so it was what categories can we rotate in that might have a better response that may be along the same vein, but a little more inclusive across the board. Uh, and I'm very lucky that last year I did it mostly by myself. I say that, but I had 
other people that were in my corner that were helping and checking in and things like that. Uh, and one of my other board members, uh, her name is Milagros, is a uh, history and publishing major. Sorry, she's a publishing mm. major with a minor. And like she helped me go through all of the categories last year. So we were up till 2 a.m multiple days uh she had a job interview one of the days the next day and she got it um i don't know how she was on very little sleep um mm -hmm. this year we've in implemented more board members which is excellent i all of our board is queer femme people and it's fantastic they're wonderful group of people that i'm very excited to be working with um that along with we implemented more um social media people more support specialists things like that that can look at the community and can speak on behalf of depending on if they're also receiving feedback so that's kind of how it changed so i'm looking very excited the changes seem to be doing very well which i'm very excited about yeah so uh Speaking of people on the back end of people on the team, yeah. um, I guess how uh, how have you found your team? How much has it grown over that past year? You mentioned you mentioned uh, a few people already, but yeah, um, it has grown a lot. Um, last year we did it was myself, Milagros. Um, we had somebody who ran the tech at home because in addition to doing a physical event, we also also did a virtual event. Um, mm -hmm because a lot of our nominees and things weren't either attending or they're in other parts of the world, like the UK, like in Portugal, like in Germany. Um, and we didn't want anybody to feel excluded. So we did a virtual event as well, and we're planning on doing so again this year. Um, and so we had like two tech runners and some security staff, and I had a support specialist, and that was kind of it. Uh, yeah. This year, there's five of us on the board uh, that can look at different categories and kind of use our special skills and our expertise in those categories um and then we've added three social media and marketing people our team of security is up to three and our project lead is now uh, did our broadcasting last year is we bumped them up to project lead so they're handling both of those things so yeah we have more of a wide variety and the way that we went about that was i did two weeks of interviews every single day for two weeks and interviewed wow. i think over 30 40 people something like that and some of the questions i asked were like what got you into ttrpgs a scenario question of hey this thing that happened last year how would you have handled this situation um so i did interviews with everybody the only one who like the only ones that stayed were milagros as a board member if we rolled her over from last year and uh, tanner who is mithril warlock who stayed on as our project lead that's quite the operation. Everybody else I interviewed. Yeah, wait. everybody else I interviewed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, way, I more, I way more organized than anything we're doing over here. Oh yeah, we're 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 two idiots and uh, lucky to get <laughs> pants on in the morning. You know, <laughs> some days though, like I will say, some days I feel that. Mm -hmm. it's like yeah, I, absolutely, it, I do. <laughs> it's it's a struggle. It's a struggle. Um, sorry. Um. So you, one of your interview questions, one of one of the great yes. all time questions for these sorts of things. What got you into TTRPGs? I want to know a little bit more about yeah. Ivy. Yeah. So I what? So where's so Where's your answer. story that brought you to all of this? Ha, turn it back on. Yeah. You. Oh yes. Um, so <laughs> I can never remember a time where I wasn't a nerd of some sort. Um, I grew up watching Star Trek and Wonder Woman with my dad, like Linda Carter. Like I, that's that's yeah. where I grew up. Was was watching those things. i um, obviously got into Doctor Who later. I've always been a nerd of sorts. So I, I, it's like that exposure to TTRPGs, like when they're talking about D&D, &D, like on a show, kind of like jokingly, of like, oh, the, the stereotypical nerd, like you see in a little bit in Big Bang Theory. Uh, yeah. Kind of like that was the first absorption of it. But how I actually got into DMing and being actively a part of the TTRPG world was I started off DMing a group of 12 newbie players oh, oh. Uh, so many. 12 uh, and you could say ivy why didn't you split the tables and it's because they were all co like co-workers and friends that wanted to play together and i was the only one with any kind of previous knowledge because i had played a couple times before like with a, mm. an ex-boyfriend um and so i was more familiar with how everything would, should go um one of them had a little bit of knowledge like Oh, I've played like a single TTRPG with my wife one yeah. time. That was like the extent of it. Um, 
And so yeah, I sat down with a group of 12 guys and we all designed characters together. I did one-on-one -on -one sessions with each of them to design their characters and I DM'd a group of 12 and eventually it kind of dwindled down, you know, scheduling and things like that to sure. a group of six. And that was... That's that was much really more scary. manageable. <laughs> much more That's manageable. So I, I will never recommend anybody to DM that many table, like that many players at the table. It was a lot. Like... I feel like that five player, four to five players is like that perfect little range right there. Six, if you really want to push it. I've heard of a lot of people doing like taking a six person table and then another six person table and then for like a big event One combining big, yeah. them. But like, hats off. That is more work than I would ever be willing to. <laughs> six, like five or six is kind of a sweet spot. Five, like... I could view it as a normal table and then have a guest on that sixth spot. Like, the, mm. I could do a table of six. That's normally about where I'm good at. But, yeah. Mm. It was too many. Would never recommend. But, um, <laughs> yeah, that was kind of where I started in TTRPGs. And then from there, uh, my first stream was on Dice Cream Sandwich, right? Mm. As uh, the plague was happening. Um, <laughs> the and great plague. The great the plague. The end of the world. And, uh, yeah. Mm. But um, I... Kev approached me, and we're really good friends, and he approached me and was like, hey, I'm doing like this one shot. I was like, oh, yeah, cool. I'd love like my first stream. And then I got a stress migraine the day before mm -hmm. because I was so stressed about finally putting myself on stream that I almost bowed out. Um, like, almost was like, I don't know if I could do it. Like, when I get a migraine, I start slurring my words. I sound drunk. Like, I can only sleep it off. Um, mm -hmm. And it only caused by stress most of the time. And I almost bowed out. And he didn't know that until last year um, that I almost called it because one of my other party members also almost bowed out for a similar reason. Um, so I'm very glad we didn't. But um, yeah, started streaming and did our first one shot. And then Kevin being Kevin said, actually, it's going to be a three shot. Actually, two years later, here's a campaign. And we played for two years. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> Up until the end of that game. But yeah, that's kind of how I got into the streaming side of things as well. I mean, streaming itself is always just a difficult step to take. It's it's a big challenge. It's a very big challenge. It's also very intimidating to put yourself out there for that kind of a long, extended period of time, just having to like always be on. Mm -hmm. it, it takes a big adjustment period. That So yeah. very well done. Um, is, are you, do you mostly play Dungeons & Dragons, or do you branch out into other sort of TTRPG systems now? Um, so... I started off with Dungeons and Dragons. Luckily, I've had a lot of wonderful friends that I've made over the years that play other TTRPGs that introduced me to other things. I also run a 24 hour charity event with some friends that we've done for the past few years, and it's all TTRPGs, so we try to do other things rather than that. Um, you can't see it, but there's actually a stack of uh, TTRPG books up like over here. This bag <laughs> right here is sitting on top of this stack. Like, it is, it is very high, and that's not including my bookshelf. So, so the answer is I do a lot of. <laughs> of collecting of books what i'm hearing books. is we need to get you more ttrpg books just so that we can get the stack high enough yeah, we, that you can see oh, it oh, i told yeah. one of my best friends i was like if the stack hits higher than me stop me like um, <laughs> if i'm going to die in an avalanche of books let me know then, and then... Me, they're all hardcover too like <laughs> Oh, oh. Then and, you're on, and you're on the west coast right so you gotta worry about mm -hmm. all the fault lines and the earthquake like at a moment's notice this yeah, like, this hobby of yours could come crashing down <laughs> you know what that sounds kind of on par for me i'm gonna be real like it'd be like wow she died doing what she left under a pile of ttrpg books like not wrong <laughs> but yeah that's that's yeah, I am very lucky that I've branched into a couple of things. I just played Monsters of the Week last week again, and I love Indeed. that system. Um, it's a lot of fun. I'm, so yeah, I'm playing Monsters of the Week tomorrow. Man, good for Ooh. you. Yeah. That, that, that one's really been pick? blowing up recently. Monster of the Week. It seems like everybody's getting into it. It's a really fun system. Um, what playbook did you pick for your character tomorrow? Oh, I'm running it. <laughs> mm. Oh, I so love I've that got, for you. I've got on uh, in my in the group. I've got. Um, Oh, we've got the spooktacular. We've got an expert, a um, I can't remember the names now. The normal guy, okay. yeah, <laughs> um, which is Lincoln, yeah. uh, and then a monstrous. I can't remember what the last one, what Salem's character is, but it's the one. Oh, the uh, the wronged. There we go. Ah, mm. uh -huh. uh, also good. Very nice. Yeah, it's a very fun system to play. It's a lot of fun. 
I really yeah, it's nice. It. It's it's been one of those things where my group as well has been trying to branch out and do other art TTRPG systems uh, a little bit on my initiative, we'll say, um, <laughs> because you know talking about all the stuff that's gone down in in the TTRPG world, having these other options is has been great mm-hmm. as well mm-hmm. as just if you want to if you want to role play more and not have to worry about combat, not playing D anD D is pretty good. Oh yeah, that, it's a it's, very it's, combat centered system. Yes, this is. Um, I have a party who we just finished our game on Monday. Uh, I am the DM. So for most games, I am the DM. I am a forever yeah. DM by choice. That is the role I like to play. Um, we finished our game on Monday. And uh, in the entirety of eight sessions, they avoided every single combat using rope trick or whatever other spells they had. Uh, they had combat once in the entirety <laughs> of our games. Yep. Rope, rope tricks, one of those those tricksy little spells that you don't ever think of. And as a D, you're like, oh, it's rope trick, whatever. No one's going to use it. And then it's that one that's like, oh, you're just going to avoid literally everything that I throw at you. That's. Yeah. Love, love that that exists. <laughs> love it. Yep. They were just a party that was like, we're just little guys. We're just little adventurers. <laughs> and we just don't really want to do this fight. And so mm. they just rope tricked. And I was like, well, there goes that. All right. Sure. All right. Mm. That's. The whole premise of this game is post-apocalyptic, so sure, avoid that combat. <laughs> this, is a, this is a weird observation that I'm just now, inc- it's just occurred to me. Um, ourselves included, and then the the three people we've had on bonus po- uh, bonus action so far, all forever DMs. Yeah. Yeah. I think there is a strong correlation between being a game master of some system and then also... Uh, being a social media personality of some kind. And yeah, when I, you... I agree. I think it's it's kind of the we are we have to perform all the time. We always put ourselves out there, anyways. So this is just mm-hmm. a, another face, almost like another aspect of that that kind of just branches off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it's 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 that idea of you've got all this creative energy. Like if you if you're going to run a tabletop game like that. You're, you need to have a lot of energy. You need to be energized and creative and want to express. Oh, yeah. And to have that energy and then bottle it up for just game nights is... It, it takes it'll take a lot out of you. <laughs> you, yeah. you gotta let it out sometimes. I can confirm because uh, for a, a little while there, I didn't have any games that I was doing, mm-hmm. running, nothing. And I struggled really hard of like feeling just brain fog where I was like, I don't know what to do because i have nothing going on so i'm just brain foggy and then you feel lethargic and and bad i was like well now we know um and then you just start to write lore and you're like oh this is gonna be great this is great i can't wait for them to read this who is a full document (laughs) yeah i have a full document like let's go uh world world anvil i'm going to create an entire anthology and just everything and it's like please read no yeah okay (laughs) okay I'll yeah, write a book. We, <laughs> right? Like I said, we finish up game on Monday, and um, somebody has a particular magic item that could branch off into a whole other game, and that was kind of done intentionally. Uh, if you want to continue like where this is going, you can do that. Mm-hmm. And then I sat Monday night after the high of D&D, and I finished writing a bunch of it. I was like, well, you know, just in case. Like, just in case they decide <laughs> to do this. Like, you know, they could. Like, just in case. A little more things. Will we get there? I don't know. <laughs> Somebody will. Uh, the, the the classic. I'm going to prep all of this, and then and then just, they go. They whoop, nope. Oh, nope, okay. nope. And we're moving on to something else that's completely unprepped. Wonderful. Thank you. I'm glad I spent hours doing this. There was only so much I could prep. Anyways, they pulled from the deck of many things. Um, that's that was how we ended the game. So <laughs> I can only prep so much. I mean, the deck of many things has such a reputation that it's always terrified me to like put it into my games. Like it, it, at I... the point at the point the deck of many things becomes available, I feel like all bets are off. Like you need to you need to accept that any plan, any story arc, like mm-hmm. all bets are off at that point. You need to just be willing to accept the chaos. And I'm and... I have not reached that point in the game yet. <laughs> I. 
I, I, because the party was so worried about it because they had put themselves in the situation. Like, this is not at all where I thought this game was going. And they yeah. put themselves in the situation where they were like, well, we need this other object. We realized the object that we were hunting for, actually, there's plurals, but we have only told, been told we need one. I wonder if we can get it for ourselves, um, mm. was kind of the energy. Went to a certain goddess's realm without permission, hence the one combat. Um, and she was like, well, I don't have it, but somebody else does. And they went to the dimension in the realm of fate. Um, and it's the god of fate and destiny. And they're not interchangeable. Those are two separate domains. Um, and one of my players is just so very clever, where they asked the god, my, my god of fate, Nexus, to pull the card that they thought that they needed. And then had the God of Fate pull their deck of anything cards for them. And it was <laughs> such a, a unique way to go about this entire game. So, yeah. That's, a, that's, like, that's like some rules lawyery shit that I really like. You know? It you just kind of sit of back and go, oh, oh. Let me, let I me did on stream. Ball. On stream, you can kind of see me like scream a little where I was like, I, I, this is not something <laughs> I was expecting to have. Hold on. But I loved how they role played that like the narrative was very good so that's it was awesome. a lot of fun that's awesome. really right, of that game let's bring it back we brought you yeah. on to talk about the crit awards here so yeah. we had we had a lot of amazing finalists uh after the nomination yes. round which i we haven't even gotten into the dates for 2024 I, correct me if i'm wrong april yes. 1st is when your nominations are opening may 31st correct. is when they're closing Correct. Uh, then you're going to be announcing your finalists on June 7th with one month yes. to vote until July 7th with Gen yes. Con being the award ceremony itself. Correct. Awesome. Yes. So yes. Yep. are in terms of finalists and nomination selections, are people that have won previously going to be ineligible for nominations for future? Uh, no, they're still eligible. For the same categories as well? Yep. Oh, same okay. categories. Nice. Yep. Nice. Um, because projects change, um, and that's, that's part of the reason why, is that um, projects rotate out, like, depending how, how often we see a three-year-long campaign, um, really, right. in this space. Um, yeah, projects get rotated out. Say a DM won a one-shot last year, even if they're in a different category. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe it's they've won something else this year. So yeah, they're still eligible. And that was something we had discussed, too, of if we wanted to allow them to be eligible. But it's such a community-focused event, we didn't want to take away the opportunity. Um, mm -hmm. So that's why. I, to, to carry on with that a little bit, are, you, are any of you concerned that perhaps, and I'm not saying that any yeah. creator would do this, but someone with a larger platform that has more access to fans would be able to, like... W does that just come kind of come down to well they're bigger so if there's more people that are going to like them so more people are going to vote for them sort of thing or are you worried about uh bigger creators possibly pushing out smaller creators that are in similar categories one of our sponsors actually asked that question um while we were getting ready to kind of see who was going to be helping us this year um we're first of all we have worked really hard on our code of conduct being um, public to everybody. Mm -hmm. So you can see and read it first before you even put forth a nominee of what the board is going to look at. And then every single vote is looked at and counted. Of uh, If we go onto your profile, we find things that we are really, really concerned about. Um, mm -hmm. Then maybe we'll have to look at that and enforce our code of conduct. Um, secondary, we're not only because of the code of conduct, the way that we have to go about looking at it. Um, obviously, like, we saw bigger creators last year, which was to be expected. We saw, like, one-shot questers, who is very dear and near and dear to my heart. Um, but, and, and there were certain fans who would go through and put them in every single category, even if they didn't qualify for those categories. Mm -hmm. uh, by then, it has to be a by the board of what category does he best fit in, um, mm -hmm. hence his, his Dungeon Master category and then winning. But, and that was excellent. But even in the voting process, we never saw somebody get zero votes. Like, 
even the most popular creators were still on par with the smaller indie creators that we had. Mm-hmm. And that goes with even like our indie like one page TTRPGs. The one the winner of our one page TTRPG is a little guy off the like coast of Portugal in the middle of nowhere that was so enthused he had even been put forward that he was shocked. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was lovely. And so the community really showed up of like, yeah, we have these people that we're really big fans of, but also these small independent creators are receiving recognition. And it was lovely to see the community come forward and support those people too. Um, it helps that we also had a read only document where you could go and click the links to somebody's project and look before you even vote it. So we, we basically have tried to put things in place to encourage the community to vote, not with a bias, but with a, wow, this thing is really cool. And we want to support this too. So yeah, that's, that's very, that's, very inspiring to hear you know yeah. that that uh especially in this day and age um that you that in another in another sort of co- uh con uh competition almost uh, a friend of mine was was you know no not a lot of social media presence does he have but mm-hmm. he was going in a competition against somebody who had a very large one and just the whole time he was like man you know i got i got all the way through my bracket mm-hmm. uh uh you know, but then when I got to this final one, I just had no shot. So it's very nice to see that no matter what the size, we're actually getting to do what you want to do, which is recognize yeah. many people across the industry. It was it was really lovely to be, because in addition to just our like TTRPG category, we have a best indie TTRPG. Like, what is something that is completely independent from any company that you like somebody else has created? That's why we have one page, and it's like we we have like five different TTRPG categories to try to include everyone that may be an independent because if you're going up against a wizards of the coast and you're a small independent creator who just kickstarted their first game that is a scary thing but to be a wow i'm an independent creator and i have been nominated for this thing yeah great this other larger company may be in this other bracket but i'm in a bracket all my own with other people that are on the same level as me and we've worked really hard to try to to make sure that everyone feels like it's fair um, we, we, like I said, it was really awesome to receive feedback. That way we can grow and become better. And this year, I, I think it's going to be, last year was good. Don't get me wrong. I loved doing it last year. This year, I feel it will be better. So, um, because growth is important. Growth is that, important. That is a great segue to what we were going to ask next. Like, what, what, what were some of the biggest successes through your process from your first year and then what are some of the big lessons that you're going to be taking going forward that are going to make yeah. this year even better? Um, the largest success I had was that I, um, we had 4,682 votes for our finalists in the end. Um, for a first year of an event in seven months, that was incredible to see of mm-hmm. how many individual people showed up and just watching the numbers tick up because I was like oh it might hit like 2000 maybe maybe like we'll, we'll hit like 2000 and then mm-hmm. it, it went over 2000 and i was like well, maybe maybe we'll hit like 250 like or two you know whatever and, and then it would take up i was like cool 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 cool, cool. we've hit like 300 or 3500 it'll probably stop around there and then it kept going and that was a wild thing to experience in real time of like trying to stop myself from looking at the numbers because then i would be like oh it's just it just keeps going up um yeah. that that was really cool to see and how many people showed up and it was great to see it come up on social media and the support afterwards like three black halflings being like oh you were our first award like you created a an award show that now three black halflings is an award-winning podcast and we can say that now like that's really cool uh, and i love i love those guys very much jeremy and jasper are incredible but um it, it was that kind of thing that was was the best that came out of it i think that and at the event itself everyone felt like it was even playing ground because we're all there for the same reason we're all there to support each other the event and to see you know like who are these new people that may be up and coming and everyone felt like even playing field like jay from soul initiative was there and somebody else was like oh i've never gotten the chance to meet him in person i feel like i can go talk to him now Mm -hmm. um and that was really cool it felt very community focused which is what i really wanted it to be the the biggest things that we're going forward with is i i have a hard time doing things alone um 
Um, I'm a very independent person. The oldest of six kids worked in probation and parole at one point. I'm a very independent person. Asking for help is hard. Um, and I feel like most TTRPG creators could probably agree with that kind of sentiment of asking for help is hard, especially oh, in this yeah. space. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Giving feedback from an event that you just put on for the first time is stressful because you don't know what the negative connotations are going to be. But I feel very lucky that one, I am in a, in a space where I can ask for the feedback and now have a board who will help me like wander through it and mm -hmm. find the best ways. So I, I feel like the things going forward that we've updated that are better is having more people in place and having the open channel and the open transparency to talk about the things. Like all of our voting policies and the way that we look at things, transparent public on the website. And when we update all of the categories, they'll go out first. That way people can start looking. And the rest of it is we've been updating our website to include like what is allowed and what isn't of no AI, but uh, like things like that. That has been some of the, the 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 things to come out that I'm excited for this year. Oh, yeah. What are the new categories specifically? We we've touched on a couple already, but what are the new categories? All encompassing. Yeah. Um. So I can't tell you all of them because we are still working on it. But we did add some more art categories. So last year we had like Best Mini Painter and things and I already said we added a terrain category. We added another podcast category so it's Best Host. We had Best Podcast last year. We have Best Host and Best Podcast this year, um, which I'm really excited about. Um, <laughs> um, we added um, a makeup category, so some cosplay makeup Ooh. categories um, which I'm really excited about because that way um i think we've we've all kind of dressed up at one point for our character and or in game oh, yeah. and things um so we want to recognize that we want to recognize the cosplayers that are putting forth hours of time before stream to get dressed up for one you know five hour game that they'll be stuck in this right. makeup and wig with so yeah we've added a makeup category we've added um some more art categories of best creature like drawing of the best creature um we added some fan art categories and things like that so uh yeah we added a lot more and i'm excited about them but Thanks. we kept things like we kept all five categories of dm so we have you know paizo chaosium um D D indie and uh vampire the masquerade and we have correlating player categories as well to those. So we kept all the things like that. We kept our outstanding community member because that one's a very important role. And we kept mm -hmm. our outstanding charity event and wellness organization category as well. So some of them changed, some ro rotated out, some uh, we combined, like the homebrew category. We combined that into a single category, but yeah. Do you have a category for people falling down the stairs, which we could possibly win? <laughs> Hmm. You know what? Uh, let me bring it to the board, and we'll get back to you. Well, we can't. We can't. We're already disqualified because we've had we've had the CEO on oh, the podcast. That's true. Yeah, yeah, it would be it would be biased. It would, yeah. de it would definitely be a conflict <laughs> of interest. Or, mm -hmm. or no. <laughs> Uh, wow. There's rules for that, actually, if you want the rules. Oh, please, please <laughs> the way that we tell. ruled this, because we had this. Um, so we have, like I said, a large group of staff. So I, however, am disqualified from everything, as you one would expect. That is a conflict of interest on my part, as are the rest of my board members. However, if excited. you were to have one of my staff members on here, uh, like one of the support specialists or uh, Nomad, who is our marketing specialist, um, you would still be eligible. He would not be. But uh, it's basically a, if you have been on something, mm -hmm. they are still eligible. They can have no part in any of the voting process. Like they cannot touch it. They cannot even see it. They can't do anything with it if they have been participating of it or if they helped create a majority of that particular project like we did a trial by sea with foreteller games where the almost the where, where every single staff like every single person that was playing was a part of the critical awards and we were like well that's uh we can't do that every single one of us has had a part of this uh including yeah. one of our artists uh, who made critty who's our little dragon mascot um so we're like yeah this is not this is not allowed um <laughs> So things like that, but it'll all be on the website as well. It'll be front page as soon as you go in to start like the FAQ, because if somebody's like, "Oh, I've done this charity event, but I'm also staff," it's such a community focused event that we don't want it to feel like 
pieces of the community cannot be allowed. Yeah. That was, it's been a struggle of trying to find that good balance, which is why we have to be very clear on our rulings. So that is yeah. why it'll be also on our website to be transparent with the community about how things are going to run. And like I said, feedback. Feedback is always welcome. It's been very helpful in how we go forward. All right. So going forward, I'm sure a lot of people love the Crit Awards. They want it to achieve that next level of greatness. You have your sponsors, which I, be I believe yeah. are more organization and other creator-based sponsors. Is there a way that just an average audience member could help you? Like, maybe perhaps, I don't know if this is... I. I genuinely don't know if this is something you do or if this is something you've considered, but like little plushies of your little mascot. So um, we haven't done plushies. There That'd are awesome. things in the works that oh. are not plushies, but they're similar shape. Oh. Um, <laughs> trying to think of a good, um, a good turn of phrase here, but I but I can't come up with one that I would want to say on the. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't. That's, I don't that's know. So valid. Don't quite know how to turn that particular phrase right now. Yeah, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm, all I'm saying is, if we had a little things. dragon plushie, it would live like right. Oh yeah, amongst all of this somewhere. There are <laughs> things that we are working on. We are mm -hmm. waiting. We we have the first one, and then we are waiting on our secondary model of it, and then we will go from there. So it's there exciting. are things. They are in the works. Um, I'm very excited about it. <laughs> Uh, I think when I showed the rest of the board, because they're the only ones who know, uh, there was only squealing and much excitement. <laughs> so, like, if that gives you a good basis, like, that's what it is. Um, nice. So, yeah, that's where we are. But, yeah, there are things coming. Um, they will be done before Gen Con. There will be things. Um, we've already ordered custom D6s, so those will be a thing that we have as well. Um one of the other big changes we added this year, which I haven't talked about anywhere else yet because this is a new thing, so you guys get to hear about it first. Um, oh, oh, exclusive. I know. Exclusive. Secrets, I know. Um, <laughs> we actually are going to have a highlighted artist each year now of somebody oh. who we ask of the community to do a piece of artwork specific to the Crit Awards that will go on all of our merch. Um, and we will have it exclusively for that year, and then the next year we'll pick somebody else. And so okay, this awesome. year we'll have somebody in particular who I'm waiting on the contract for, and then they will do all of the artwork. Uh, and that will be specifically what we use for that year. So that way it's more of a collectible thing of like, oh, I have this from this year, but I've got this artist from this year. Um, oh, so that's, that's another fun thing that we're doing. Another way to implement more people, more artists in the space, uh, is to just give them a little bit of a spotlight for it. So I'm excited about it. That's very exciting. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Well, I'm going to be spending a lot of money every year now. <laughs> you already spent a lot of money. I'm trying to collect. I gotta, ca gotta catch them all. Gotta catch them all. Gotta I also spend a lot of money at Gen Con, so I don't feel oh my God. I, I literally, <laughs> I literally have like basically a savings account. And then that always gets drained right before Gen Con. It's like, all right, here we go. We're, we're going full bore. Yeah. Um, I... I last year was, I went, I went to Gen Con, I took all of the Critter Awards stuff down with me, like flew, and so I had a checked bag that was just like Critter Awards stuff, <laughs> flew, um, and I was like, cool, 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 I'll empty out some of it, like people will get their dice, look at their stuff, I will have a little bit of space, and then I ended up with four TTRPG books and was 40 pounds overweight on my checked bag <laughs> and had to pay for it. <laughs> so there's that. It was miserable. I was like, well, there's nothing I can even do. I can't even take them out. Like, oh. this is just what it is. So. That's, a, that's a story of the nerd. Like, yeah, I was going to the convention, and then... Uh, I brought an empty suitcase, and I was still overweight on the empty suitcase, filling it up on the way back. My favorite yep. is hearing uh, MTG creators talk about when they try to go to cons and stuff. They're like, oh, yeah, I, I want know. to bring, like, five or six decks. Got pulled over by the TSA because they're like, what's in your, you know, what's in, we just x-rayed your bag and there's five bricks of something in there. What's in your bag? And they're like, no, it's magic cards. <laughs> Cardboard in plastic sleeves. <laughs> so sorry. Yeah, some, not of my, some of my dice maker friends get the same thing. Of they'll get pulled, like, especially if they, like, are selling dice at the con and they've brought their inventory. They get pulled oh, all the time. <laughs> Because it's like, what are these sharp objects? It's like they're dice, I swear. Like Sharp <laughs> objects in boxes? That can't be safe. <laughs> that can't be safe. What is that? <laughs> so, we are 
we also do Magic the Gathering. Have you thought mm-hmm. about, con- have you considered expanding the Critter Wards into beyond, like, adjacent to tabletop RPG communities, be they collectible card games or You did board mention games? Warhammer. You, yeah, mm-hmm. Warhammer. Yep, there's a couple of things that we are currently working on, um, because there are a bunch of other niches in the space that are kind of, mm-hmm. like, overlapping or adjacent to TTRPGs that aren't necessarily that. Um mm-hmm. We are actively working on making a couple of new things specifically for our authors and collectors and things like that of what that would look like. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we will in the future have more events. We are already working on it. So I'm very excited about that too. Yeah. All right. One, one last thing before we start wrapping this up. I sure. have the actual physical awards that are given. Yes. Are you going to be like... First of all, how did you go choose, obviously, sets of dice, but how did you go choosing who's making them? Are you going to be doing them differently every year, or are you going to go, like, the Oscars route and be like, this is the trophy, this is what it looks like, it's going to be the same, and try and keep that heritage going through, or you're going to try and cycle through? Sure. So I'll answer the first question first of how did I pick who it was. Uh, I reached out to dice makers, like small indie or small independent creators in the space, and said make me a set of dice or even a chonky d20 make me whatever you want that you feel best highlights you here's our colors of the event you don't have to go with the colors and make me whatever you feel like best highlights your skills and that is what i asked of them and so we got we got a couple of of blue sets but the person who made our vampire the masquerade set for our dm uh it was completely different than everything else it was black with florals on it uh it was really funny it matched his shirt uh when he came and accepted them it was really cute um but they were completely different because they're different things and so we had Five, we have five other sets of like this very oceanic blue color that somebody else did. Uh, we did two chunky D20s that were blues and blacks that had skulls on them. Another person did bismuth dice. So we basically asked whatever you feel best highlights what you are as a creator, like whatever you feel like you want to show off creatively. That was how we went about that. And not everybody participated. It was uh, either, no, I can't do it at the time. I don't have the, the time. I don't have the energy, whatever. That's fine. Mm-hmm. It was more of a we want to include the dice, dice makers in a space other than just being nominated. They make pieces of art. Like, oh, yeah. Um, Equinox Dice, who won last year, when she accepted it, said a really beautiful thing of she gets to create art that people get to tell stories with. And I think that's a perfect way to encompass what I kind of was hoping for when we asked them. Um, as for what they're going to be like in the future it's going to be both it's going to be yes a little bit of the oscars route of we have this particular thing um we're working on ways to implement some mini painting artists with that Mm -hmm. of asking community artists to paint Mm -hmm. them that way they're all different and exclusive to those artists but as a thing of we're giving this award they're all uniform but Mm -hmm the paint job may be different across every single one. Um, so that's another part that we're trying to implement more people in the community to feel seen and show off their creativity of giving them something to paint and then giving it to one of our winners. But also dice, because across the board, we love dice. Um, because dice. Who doesn't because love dice? dice? So, who doesn't? But yeah, we asked a bunch of creators. Um, everybody was very generous last year. Everybody was very mm-hmm. excited about it, and they've done so this year as well. So we'll I'll have dice and things as well. A lot of smaller things. Do you have anything, Samuel? Yeah. Um, I mean, just kind of, we've gone over a lot of the the technical. We've gone over a lot sure. of the the hypothetical, the theoretical, the philosophical. Do you just have a, a favorite memory from from you know from when you were uh, when you came oh. up with this idea all the way through? Do you have a favorite memory from last year of putting this on? Of <laughs> okay, uh, um, there's a couple that immediately stuck out. So the first one being. <laughs> Um, Dixon, who is one of the community managers for Wizards of the Coast, emailed me two weeks before Gen Con and said, hey, I'm inviting you to this thing, uh, which was 30 minutes after the Crew Awards was supposed to end. And I emailed him back saying, hey, I have this thing. I may show up in a ball gown. We don't know. Um, and that was basically the full email. Um, but yeah, I'll be there like when I can. That was basically yeah. the full email, um, which was really funny. Um, the secondary being... I got to see Brendan Lee Mulligan, and he's a friend of a friend, and I had not yet to meet him, but I met him, and that was really wonderful. 
somebody outed me after <laughs> being at the Crit Awards. It was the same day. It was that event afterwards where I ran into him. And somebody brought up that, yeah, Ivy just did this thing, like, to him. Um, and I was like, cool, 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 cool. Like, just <laughs> great. Um, and he asked me about it. And we stood there for about 15 minutes and talked. And then he afterwards went and sought out some of our nominees who won and congratulated them. And that was really cool. That was what? very sweet of okay. him that he did not need to do. Um, it was a, it was just a very sweet moment of getting to watch my nominees be excited that Brennan came and like congratulated <laughs> them on this award in the TTRPG space. Like that's so cool that it was supported in such a way that I wasn't expecting. That was really neat. Um, that and just like the general feedback. But those are the ones that kind of stuck out at the time. That and I had Omega Jones, who is Critical Bard, and Gabe Hicks mm -hmm. as my hosts. And those mm -hmm. two just go. Oh, yeah. Like the chemistry between the two of them. One, they're like siblings. But two, <laughs> they are so much fun and so professional and so cool to be around. And I mm -hmm. owed so much to them with their feedback, with their jumping on and helping me with things. Those two individuals are just amazing creators that I'm very lucky to call my friends. So it was, it was kind of those things that stick out to me the most. That is amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. Brennan, Brennan Lee Mulligan, guys. Friendly Mulligan. Mulligan. Ah, what, what yes. I, I, love, I love when, like, the biggest amongst us, like, get it, you know? Oh, yeah. They get, they get yeah. it. They get That's... He was so wonderful and kind about it. He was so excited. It, it was it was great. It was very sweet of him. So, yeah. Those are my, those are my favorites, I think. <laughs> well, Ivy, this has been a joy. Thank you so much for coming on and letting us just pepper you with a bunch of random thoughts and questions. Uh, Always. The, yes. Uh, this year's coming Crit Awards. April 1st, nominations open. May 31st, nominations are going to close. You'll announce the finalist on June 7th. And voting will go until July 7th, where the award show itself will be at Gen Con. Is there anything else that you want to pimp? Where can people find you? How can they get involved if they want to get involved? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm Gamer the Girl across all of my personal socials. When I'm not on Gamer the Girl, I'm DMing over at Dice Cream Sandwich. But there's another project in a work where you might see me on the secondary channel, so stay tuned for that. If I'm not on either of those things, you can come find me on the Curl Awards. It just kind of depends what day it is. Um, I DM most of the time. I do charity <laughs> events. I'm over as a t uh, marketing and tech producer for Rolling for Charity, where we run charity events every year. So if you're interested in participating in 24-hour charity events, that's where I'm also at during the year. Uh, it just kind of depends on where you can find me. You'll catch me one of these days. Uh, as Brian from Chaosium says, I do not sleep. So you can find me wherever. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that's me. Um, I have a couple of new games coming up soon. My cast is being cast as we speak. So, yeah, just keep an eye out for those things. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you again. We would love to have you on once, like, nominations or finalists are announced and we can go yeah, through and absolutely. talk about all the options. I think that would be a really fun, fun podcast. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And to, the and to the listener, vote now, vote often. Don't vote now because it's not available for voting yet. <laughs> April 1st. It's not a joke. It just sounds like one. April 1st. All right. Well, thank you very much. And uh, we'll see you guys at the next episode of Bonus Action. Duels of Man Dark's podcast. Black Holes Eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs>